While you guys are voting on the post, uh, let me tell you a few things about the session. Uh, this presentation is UX testing and Morpheus, Sakai's new responsive user interface, and will be presented by Mark Kurali. I will introduce him in a second. Uh, please note that all attendees are muted for this session. If you have any questions, please enter in the questions box underneath there. You can also um, enter the question at any time. Um, we will either address them um, during the session or answer them at the end as we will see what, how it goes. The session being recorded right now and will be available at a later date on the Aperio YouTube channel. If you have any problem with the video or audio, please signal me in the question box. I will try to solve it. Okay, so this is the first vote. I will give it a few seconds, then we will move on. Uh, when we introduce, uh, when I introduce Mark, I will launch the second poll. Okay, we're almost there. Um, I see that 6% uh, of people are very familiar with it, and 29 have uh, some work with it, 53 uh, have heard of it, and 12% have no idea. All right, so Mark, you have some idea about this audience. Okay, we're moving on to, the, yeah, so we are moving on to the second poll, um, and uh, uh, we will introduce Mark. Okay, so this is the second poll. And I will introduce Mark. Mark Riley is a user experience designer at New York University's Academic Technology Services. He has been working on a new responsive portal for Sakai 10. Mark has been designing and building websites since 1996. He has specialized in education softwares and has worked with WNET 13 PBS, Scholastic, Columbia University, and currently works for New York University. He's an open source enthusiast and is active in the SAS, Drupal, and the Sakai communities. At NYU, he set up two cross-campus communities of interest focusing on user experience and Drupal development. All right, I'm very glad that uh, you guys have been very active on the second poll. Uh, the question is, are you familiar with the Morpheus project? Um, all right, so nobody's very familiar with it. 15% uh, know some of it. 35 have heard of it. 50% have no idea. So, Morpheus, uh, so Mark, you have a lot of explanation to do. Okay, so shall we get started? That sounds good. Okay, so Mark, I'm going to make you a presenter in a second. All right, all yours. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining me here today. Um, hopefully, you can see my screen. Um, I'm going to just go full screen on my presentation. And I'm going to do some recapping. So some of you may have um, seen my presentation at Open Imperio in Miami last year, or not last year, last June. Um, and I'm going to go over some of that material because I know a lot of you haven't seen it. Um, but it's a good way to explain more fields. Um, so let's, let's start. Um, oh, one note I, I did want to say. I, was, I wasn't sure if I was going to make it today. My wife is six days overdue. Uh, but she said nothing's happening at the moment. So. Um, all right. Thank you. 
So this is Sakai. Let's meet Morpheus. And what is Morpheus? It's the mobile optimized responsive portal for higher education using SAS. Um, so that's a nice uh, acronym. Um, and it has a little history insofar as um, uh, the new skins that came in in 2.9 um, were called NEO. And then um, we're also working in conjunction with um, the Project Trinity that Chuck Sevens created, um, which is to remove the iframes from, um, from the portal. We'll talk a little more about that in, later on. So let's, uh, let's move on here. Um, this presentation is on GitHub. Uh, and who am I? I am Mark Riley. I work, I'm a user experience designer. And I work for New York University. And this is Morpheus. Um, Mark, we don't see any presentation. Have you shared your screen? No. <laughs> hmm. Here we go. I have two screens, so it might have been a little... Uh, are we seeing it now? Okay, that's a lot better. Okay. I, yes. I, I, uh, looks like I... Let me uh, rewind a little bit. Okay. So I'm used to um, go to meeting, and it's slightly different. Okay. So let's. Um, so Morpheus, we'll go with is a mobile optimized response support for higher education using SAS. Um, it's a nice acronym. And. So this is me. Let's go back into full screen mode. And okay. Okay, so let's talk about what Morpheus is. So Morpheus is two parts, um, it, and it exists in the portal. So it is in Sakai 10. It's experimental, so it's not turned on by default. Um, it's still a work in progress. Um, the plan is to make it the default in Sakai 11, um, but we have quite a bit of uh, work to do and usability testing and QA and stuff like that. Um, it's in so. For those developers, it's in two parts of Sakai, portal and reference. And here are the uh, SPN links. Um, and it, it, it's now-ish. So it's, it's in there. The templates were committed in February. They're actually being refactored a little bit. Um, and then the SAS is under active development. Um, so you might be asking, why another new skin? We just had a new skin, as I mentioned, in 2.9, the Neo skin. And this one is born out of usability testing. Um, at NYU, we had a pilot. Um, we did usability testing on that. We tested our faculty users um, who had never used Sakai, so we were still in pilot. So there was plenty of people who had never seen Sakai but had um, familiarity with LMSs, mostly with our um, Blackboard instance. And, and we decided to do remote testing because we kind of wanted to see how people uh, connected in a natural in, in their natural environment so, and from their office. We found quite a lot of usability issues. Um, we did testing both um, in general and, and my colleague actually who I worked uh, extensively with Francesca will be talking a little more about this um, how we did this um, and preparing you for some of the live usability testing we're planning this afternoon. Um, so that's at 1 o'clock. Um, please attend that. There's going to be a lot of good information there. I'm just going to talk more about the results um, today um, and just show you some of the issues that we came across. We found quite a lot. We did testing in general and then testing on tool-specific scenarios. But we did find there was significant uh, usability issues 
just getting around. So place finding, um, navigation, messaging, and just hiding and showing items. So we did uh, we we did some quick fixes. So we wanted to get stuff out in into the pilot. So we wanted to do some stuff. Um, and I'll, I'll go through some of these in a, in a minute. Um, we did some quick fixes, and then we planned for some long, longer-term fixes. Um, in the long-term fixes, so what that actually meant was rewriting the user interface um, for NYU classes, which is our instance of Sakai. Uh, this is Sakai 2.8. Um, and part of that is new icons, and I, I'll give a demo of that in a little bit. Um, try to help um, expose the iframe. So to fix the mental model, we found a lot of people had issues with the iframes because in our instance, and I think in the default in 2.8, they were uh, white on a white page. So there was no way to realize that these were really widgets embedded in the page rather than um, part of the page. So we wanted to highlight those. Um, and then we wanted a group navigation item by function and just get better messaging. So there's there's some instances, especially in 2.8, where some of the uh, informational messages were really displayed in red and they seemed like error messages. And we had people in the usability test, we observed them um, really getting stuck on, on some of these things, including closing all their tabs, restarting a browser, a different browser, trying to get rid of this message uh, that was saying you, I think it's in the grade book, and it's saying you can't have two tabs open, but it's not aware if you have two tabs open. Um, and it's really more of an informational message, but because it's in red, people were uh, paying attention to it. So we'll talk about some, uh, the user interface. Um, we wanted to create it organized, uh, make it modular, and reusable. So part of uh, Morpheus is it's a framework for um, working with the Sakai user interface um, to make it easy just to do the simple things like changing the colors to your institutional colors and changing the branding. But also, if you really, if you have the interest and, and the expertise, um, a dedicated person to uh, really go in and change things around. Um, so what? decided uh, was what we needed to do just to organize the CSS. This was part of the problem, which said it was just one big file. And even though there were lots of um, good documentation in the notes uh, section in the file, it was just a very large file. and very hard to find out what was controlling what and to make changes. So we wanted to use a CSS preprocessor. And that's just a way to um, break things up into more discrete chunks and then compile it um, uh, into the CSS. And it gives you things that aren't in CSS, such as functions and more programmatical um, and variables, things that uh, aren't in CSS but are in most programming languages. Um, we also were interested uh, in what we're making a responsive design. Um, and the three tenets of responsive design are fluid images, fluid grids, and media queries. Um, but when we did a little testing on how to make um, Sakai 2.8 responsive, we ran into a number of issues. Uh, and, and one of the challenges is with responsive design is dealing with the navigation. Uh, there's quite a few different menus in Sakai, so how to put these and make these uh, useful. And we'll show some of the solutions for that. Um, then if you need to change the HTML source order um, to make it responsive. Um, and then the current markup in the NeoSkin was very uh, convoluted. And it had a lot of divs and things that have been added in over the years um, that just made it much more complicated than it needed to be. Uh, and uh, from a technical point, there were a lot of, uh, there weren't a lot of classes. And on which to design it. And then the issue for us, so when we did our, our little prototype, um, was upgrading. So if we went and made significant changes to the markup uh, for NYU classes, 
Um, then when we needed to upgrade, which we're going to do this winter, this basic content, um, we would have to make all those changes. So we decided that it made much more sense if we really wanted to change the templates to do it um, in the community and uh, create new skins for that. Um, so let's let's look actually before we dig into Morpheus um, at some of the changes that we found in um, actually, sorry, uh, that we did to NYU. What we did at NYU, I should say. Um, and this is just a document. Um, and these are some of the changes. The issue here we had, and, and also I wanted to show in this document how things were iterative. Um, and so it, in on the left side, which says it's spring 2012, uh, this was our pilot phase. And then um, fall, the middle column, Fall 2012 is um, what we did. These are our quick fixes. And then the proposed, which actually went in last summer, um, are our new, our, uh, our new NYU classes skin. Um, so here we have my workspace. So one thing we, we found that in our usability testing was people really didn't understand my workspace. And because it was with the other tabs, um, people didn't really understand that it was different than a course site. Um, so we did a couple of things. One was to give it a different background color. Um, that was our quick fix. And we also added the word my. So um, one thing that was not obvious and still isn't as obvious um, to people, um, certainly in the 2A instance, was that in my workspace, uh, your resources and um, especially your resources are universal to all your sites. So people wanted to be able to upload. Um, we had quite a lot of requests for people wishing to upload uh, resources to multiple sites. And they didn't realize that this functionality was in there. We added in the, the prefix my resources to kind of help with that and distinguish it and then give it a dark background color versus the white or the light gray um, to distinguish between what my workspace is and um, the, the course sites. The other thing we worked on was um, we moved my workspace. So in the new UI, um, we moved my workspace out of the tabs um, and up into its own top bar here. And then um, uh, one usability issue. I'm going to talk about the main nav. So this is the, the one, top two, are our, um, our, our nav when we uh, did our usability testing back in spring. Um, and then our quick fixes um, are on the second part. And then you can see down the bottom where how my workspace relates to the um, different uh, course sites here. So um, one thing that we introduced accidentally um, and only discovered really through careful observation was that in the spring 2012, we didn't have a tab background by default. Once you hovered over it, um, it was a tab. And then when you got the mental model that these were uh, different sites. But we found there was initial difficulty um, basically before people rolled over finding their other sites. Um, and then, so we, that was one thing we fixed in fall 2012. And it, it, it was interesting because this is really the power of uh, usability testing is this mixture of um, observation and looking at people's behavior because no one ever reported having uh, the problem. Uh, but we, had, we kept observing an issue and then we had a, a insights of what the issue was. And um, it was because as soon as you rolled over it, you got the mental model, and you understood, and then you never thought about it again. But that initial point where you didn't get, um, until you rolled over it, you didn't get the mental model, and people were struggling finding their course sites. So we introduced just a simple tab background. And here, 
you can see that uh, my workspace has a dark background. Um, and then again, in our new uh, user interface, our new UI, um, we move my workspace out of the tabs and up into its own space on the top bar. Um, and here, let's have a look at um, the tool now. Um, and we organize things by function. So our quick fixes was we were um, it was a written uh, initially a white on a white page. Um, so people had a little um, issue, especially with the minimize button here, because um, it seemed to be floating off there. We added a light gray background here um, to kind of encase that and to give you an idea that this is a nav rather than just a list on the page. Um, and then in our new UI, we actually organize things into category and change the icons um, to make them a little more compatible. And also, another thing we did was to show um, that there was an issue was the default um, to know when you are at something. So the state. So here, if you see settings, I'm hoping you're seeing my mouse there. Um, is in a we've reversed it out, so it's quite obvious that you're in settings. Here on the page we're at home, and it's just uh, black text versus uh, purple text, and here it's it's a light gray text versus purple text. Um, and we also renamed some of these uh, categories here. And then just moving on to the tools page, here we had a um, an issue where we realized that the mental model was a little broken. So people, again, this is uh, our widgets on the, um, the site homepage, I believe. Um, and they were white on a white background. We added just a border around them and created kind of a box to give you an idea that they uh, were um, that they were actually iframes more like widgets on the page. And if you remember I Google, it was a little like that. Um, and then we just change also the navigation here. And you can see it a little better on this page. And hopefully the contrast is strong enough on the display to see that things are boxed in. And it makes more sense than this white space version where everything is white on white. Uh, and then we decided to uh, color code our system messages. Um, and these were actually in Sakai, but they weren't really uh, as distinguished. So the classes do exist that we were able to use. Um, but we set up a color um, and an icon um, to distinguish between information, error, warning, and success. Um, we also um, added a background color to some of the buttons and made them a little bigger um, in this version. So the active buttons, the ones that you really should click, we're just blue in the initial one. Um, we made this a blue background to make it a little more prevalent. We added red to the cancel icon. Um, and then in the final version, we changed the color scheme a little bit so that the, it's green um, for the primary action and uh, red for the cancel. And then we just cleaned up the footer a little bit. Um, and added, uh, just made it feel more like a footer, and, and then hid some of the uh, technical details um, from view as well. So depending, you know, um, it's helpful for developers to know um, what server and what version of Sakai you're running, but it doesn't, it's not helpful to the general user. So we just hid that. You can view source and see it if you want. Um, and let's go quickly. So um, just why am I talking about NYU classes? NYU classes is kind of the prototype for Morpheus. So one thing to say, it's not responsive. Um, again, we we um, didn't want to, uh, I'm just trying to get out of this. We didn't want to change the templates um, and maintain them um, ourselves. So we wanted to do it in two phases. One was to change the UI um, using SAS um, and build this framework. And then the second phase was then to create new templates and then uh, do a new pass on creating the SAS uh, structure. 
So um, a lot of the stuff we've done at Emily classes will be in Morpheus. Um, some of it is already in there right now. Um, and I just wanted to explain how uh, our, our thinking, how these, um, that Morpheus really is born from usability testing. That we've taken uh, the issues that we saw within NYU classes and, and really try to find solutions for them. We tested these solutions with our faculty. Um, and uh, they definitely found it easier to get around. So let's just see. Here's a document that we presented. Um, this is an informational document, mostly internal, um, about how one um, uh, how one. Oops. Oh, wow. So. Um, and how one, so this is our, our, our original NYU classes, the current one. We wanted also, when we decided to introduce a new user interface, we wanted to do it in a very uh, careful way. Um, so we uh, allowed you to preview it before um, and rather than committing it. So we certainly didn't want to um, upset our users or do it at a bad time in the academic year, such as at finals or anything. So we wanted to give people the ability to uh, turn it on when they wanted to and leave it on if they wanted to. Um, and we've had, uh, looking at our, our stats, there's quite a lot of people who are using the, uh, the current one. So uh, using the new UI, some people switch back and forth um, and we're tracking some of that. But mostly people who, who switched it on left it on. So this was, a, we introduced this preview of the new uh, classes design. Um, and that brings down a little uh, pop-up, and you hit the button. And then you um, it reloads the style sheets. So again, NYU classes UI is just changing the CSS. Yeah? Um, and there is a way to get back to exit the preview. And I'm just going to go over some of the changes here. Um, and that's uh, place finding. So again, we've moved my workspace. We talked about that. Um, we have, again, we kept the dark background for my workspace, but just changed it a little bit. And then we have um, the, uh, created the border box around the iframes. Um, we've highlighted the names. One thing that we made, and actually this was a suggestion from the faculty, was we've made the, um, the calendar, so the title um, is now clickable it has, if the, the widget has a home state. Um, we changed the, the icon, the reset icon, which was probably the biggest usability issue within NYU classes. Um, we changed that to a home icon, um, but also we made the title clickable. And this was um, an idea actually that came from meeting with the faculty's user advisory group that um, when we were demo, uh, demonstrating some of the changes we were proposing, uh, this was a suggestion, and it, it's been a great uh, suggestion, and it will be in more case, too. Um, one thing we wanted to do was highlight the, um, the help. Um, so if you click on help here versus on the sidebar, um, you get a specific help to that tool. And a lot of people didn't realize this. And when we did some uh, informal usability testing with some of our support staff, some of them hadn't seen it um, because it was kind of off in the corner on a white background. Um, and then we wanted just to add the cog to options um, to give you an idea of what to expect when you click on that. And in the old skin, people weren't really sure what it meant. And it's really more about changing status. Um, so let's look at navigation. So here we're going to click on this philosophy and literature uh, course site. And then uh, that loads in. And we have, on our uh, tool navigation, we've added categories here. Um, we've added, uh, so let me go back. So we're in the home section, and we've made that much clearer uh, than it was currently, um, at least in the 2.8 skin. And uh, we've added categories here. Um, we've changed the minimize, maximize um, icon. Um, because 
that was kind of confusing. It looked like a rewind button, um, and people were very confused, especially when the reset, um, the tool reset icon was placed beside it, as it was in our pilot. And so this is our minimized here. So our icons um, are viewable if you minimize the navigation. Um, and we still maintain the categories here. Um, so if we scroll down, one thing we've done here is um, added an icon with a, it's an I with a slash through, and that indicates that this page is not visible to everyone. Um, so this is, uh, the instructor only sees this settings page. Um, I believe this was, we changed it from some of the terminology for some of our tools, so I think it's site info in, by default in Sakai. And, and we're just going to go in and edit some tools here. And you can see that the categories are brought through here, and, and they're in the same order. Um, and then we're just going to click back on the tool home. Or the, um, We also changed the word reset. So when you hover over the uh, icon here, it says tool home instead of reset. We found people were very scared of resetting um, things, and some people wouldn't even click on it in their usability testing because they were afraid they were going to lose uh, information. And that's probably the worst thing you can uh, do to your users is uh, delete information. Okay, so we're back on the click at the tool order. So this is how we reorder the tool. We changed some of the icons here um, to reflect, I believe they are still light bulbs, but they, um, it's certainly in 2.8, um, the icon was a light bulb um, to turn things on and off, and it was a little confusing. Um, so we changed it to an eye and an eyeball. So here, we're again bringing in the categories, um, and here if we hide something, uh, we get a nice error message, or not an error, a confirmation message uh, saying what has happened. Um, and then when we reload the page, you can see up there that syllabus has now got this uh, eye icon with a slash showing that it's, it's invisible. Um, and then if we go and look using the uh, student role, we can then see that it is indeed not visible on the uh, side here. And we're going to go back to be an instructor, and we can see that it's there. And then also when you minimize it, it is gray. Um, just to give you another visual indication that uh, there's something different here. So even if you have minimized the nav, um, you're aware of that this icon has uh, a certain, is in a certain state. Ah, so here is the, we've also moved the unpublished site out from um, the side now and just made sure that it's it's much more obvious. Uh, we had quite a few uh, calls about this um, where people, when they set up a course, I didn't uh, want to publish it right away and then they came back a, a few days later and then didn't understand whether students couldn't see it. Um, and it's because the uh, unpublished status was very discreet, hidden in the, in the corner. So we wanted to make it that a, lo a lot more obvious. And then also the publish and to make it um, into a button, because it, I think it's just a link at the moment. And it's just not as obvious what to do to publish it. Okay. So And then, again, in the minimized um, navigation, um, we've just added an icon there so that you're aware of that. And then, see. and then just to get back, you just click Exit the Preview, and you're back into your um, NYU classes. Okay, so let's just jump back a little bit and dig into Morpheus a bit. Um, and okay, so. Like I said, Morpheus is two things. Um, one is the uh, new templates, um, and then there's the new CSS. So we've looked at some of 
the, the features just from the CSS from MYE classes. Um, and the, we have new VM templates. Um, this is just technical thing. Um, they've been updated to HTML5. We've simplified the markup. And we've added uh, a bunch of semantic tags that are in HTML5. Um, so this is nice and clean here. Um, we've added the viewport tag, which just means if you're looking at it on a mobile phone, it's not going to um, it's going to be the right size. We've also just um, added stuff for IE8, and it's just for IE8. Um, and so we have special style sheets just for IE8 because it doesn't understand uh, media queries, so it, it gets uh, it's a little broken. Um, but this will solve that issue. Um, and then we also added a way to put um, JavaScript within the skin. Um, so, and that for developers is, is a big thing. We've also just broken uh, with stuff that were um, repeatedly called in the, in the templates into snippets. And these are just some of them. Um, and we've added classes while leaving the IDs, and that's just for backwards compatibility. Um, and these are the reasons for using classes. So. Hi, Mark. Yeah. Um, it's um, uh, 10 minutes left. We have quite some questions. OK, uh, let me just um, yeah. do one thing. Yep. Yeah. And then we'll, we'll break the questions. Okay. Um, and here is just Morpheus uh, working in just two browser windows. So here we have um, the desktop view, and then this is a mobile view here. So uh, if you make this one smaller, it will jump to this one. And just I want to show very quickly uh, where the menus are. We have uh, <coughs> menus here. And also, they come in from the side here. So this is just how we solve the, the menu issues. Um, if you want to take a quick look at it, this is actually a little older code. But um, you can go to this uh, Marist uh, QA site. And I'm going to paste this into the chat. I'm not sure if this goes to everyone. Um, but perhaps the. Uh, uh, yeah, I think you it. can post it there, yes. Okay, so. Okay, this is a very nice demonstration of the Morpheus. Mm -hmm. um, let me jump to the questions very quickly. Um, Okay, so the first question came about the tabs. How about when there are two lines of tabs? Did they make sense for the people? Um, yeah. We're going to have the, uh, currently we have that uh, little overflow um, issue. Um, this is the kind of dashboard thing, and there will be something similar in the mobile device for that. Um, there's only four sites on here, so it hasn't kicked in. Mm -hmm. On that demo. Um, also, you can. Uh, so this one is a better example. You can see the. Um, this is a little broken here, but um, you can see the different things in here, so you can actually replicate this kind of uh, information. Yeah. Um, so next one is the comment. So it looks like you use the awesome icons, awesome fonts for the icons. Uh, font Olson, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, for um, MIE classes, we used a different set, but we are planning on using uh, Font Olson um, as a basis for um, for Morpheus. Okay, uh, could you share the, the Google Docs you showed? Um, I can share some of them. <laughs> um, I, I just have to check with NYU. Some of them are internal. Um, okay. One place is actually here is a list of links that I can uh, also present. 
And this is um, on the GitHub. This is where we're putting a lot of um, documentation here. And there's some yeah. links to the full slides here that I, I was going through. Um, the Open Aperio session, uh -huh. um, YouTube video, and just some of the uh, documentation. Okay. Uh, would you post the links in the uh, conference uh, page? That would be nice. Yeah. So people can see them later. Sure. Okay. Next question. Will this ever become part of the core Sakai or is just customization for NYU? Oh, so that's, yeah, Morpheus is, is the um, putting the stuff that we did in NYU into core Sakai and then the plan is to make it the default um, for Sakai 11. Um, it's currently in Sakai. Um, it's still under active development. It's in Sakai 10, but it's a hidden feature that you have to turn on. Um, and then, so Maros has set up a QA um, site where, where you can with it turned on and you can uh, play around with that. It's a little out of date, I just noticed beforehand. Um, so we will be updating the code soon. This one? Yeah. And that's the, uh, this one here. Um, let's see if I can... Make it big. Um, is there another question? Yes, there are many questions. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, uh, we're running out of time, so I have to pick and choose. Oh, uh, great. Yes, so one question came, how did you collect the faculty student usability feedback? Um, we're going to talk a lot about that at 1 o'clock. Um, okay, so that's yeah. one o'clock. Very good. Mm -hmm. um, um, but we did remote testing, and okay. we'll, we'll go into details about more about that. Um, okay. So where can I find the Morpheus configuration instructions? Um, um, that, yeah, that is if you go to the uh, documentation links. The best place to look at it is in the in the SVN repository. There is a README um, there, and then I can pull that up. Okay, uh, so would you post that in the conference page? Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. that'd be yeah. perfect. Okay, so I think there's uh, another question here. It's a little bit uh, long. These changes are very nice. Are they being folded back into the community code? Are these changes you would uh, need to likewise customize on? Along with changes, do you also customize your help documentation? Uh, we did a little bit of uh, customizing our help documentation, probably not enough, um, but I believe there is a, um, in Sakai 10, there is a different way to handle customization of the help, um, and that's much easier to make changes. So we did add some things um, to our help documentation, but not enough because it, it's still a lot, it was still hard to uh, uh, edit. Okay. Uh, do you have to know SAS to write a new scheme using Morpheus? Oh, well, I didn't really get into this because my timing was a little off, but no, you don't. Um, and there's quite, basically the idea is you just need to change the colors in the, there's a configuration and variables, and then uh, run a script. This will be very well documented, and it will generate new CSS for you with your colors and your new logo and things like that. So if, um, we wanted to make sure that if you didn't know SAS, you could still use Morpheus uh, for very simple um, uh, changes. But if you really wanted to go in and, and configure things quite differently, that you would you'd want to know a little bit of SAS, um, and and but you'd have that freedom to go in and really make some significant changes to to your look and feel. Okay. All right. Um. Okay, I think we can take one last question here. Um, if we, uh, it will support, it will have support for ITL locales. I'm not talking about change your skin, but add an HTML attribute like DIR and managing CSS automatically. So yes, this is so a technical, yeah. Yeah, we, um, as part of Morpheus, we want to have three example skins. One is going to be the default, that's kind of what we're showing here. One is going to be a um, kind of a university style, and the other will be a um, RTL, a right to left um, one, because we want to do that one right. So 
if your institution does do RTL, please get in contact with me because we want to really uh, get that working properly because I think it's a very important part of um, Sakai and we want to have a, a good, um, we don't currently use one even in our Abu Dhabi campus, but um, we would love someone who knows uh, that uh, the concerns for RTL um, to get in touch with us and so we can get it right in more fields. Okay, so finally I'm going to enter the URL for the GitHub link here in the questions. I hopefully everybody can see it. Uh, thank you, Mark. Uh, mm -hmm. This is almost time. Please post your information in the conference page later and we yep. can all go answer the questions in the forum. Yes, and if you have any other questions, um, please okay. email the dev list or me directly and just yeah. put Morpheus in the subject title and uh, I'll look at for that. Yeah, if you uh, want to know about the NYU, how they did the usability testing, it's 1 o'clock. Uh, we have the orientation uh, session at 1 o'clock. Thank you, guys. Thanks.